Okay, I've got the thumbs up. So that should mean that we're joined by all of our other sites. So we're in a moment, we're, we're, we're steady, steady, but we're in a moment, we're going to give a big cheer to Ellen, Inverurie, Kingswells, St. Macca, Lawrence Kirk, Stonehaven, Cafe Church, Guilt Park and Cafe Church, St. Macca. Let's give them all a cheer. Hello. Yeah, there you go. So, so good to have you with us if indeed you are with us, which we're praying that you are. Um, today's our annual vision day, so if you're visiting either here or in one of our sites, you need to know that it's just going to be a bit different. So normally what we would do is we would start with a passage of scripture, and we would wrestle with its meaning for us, and we would try to apply it to our lives today, and we'd give our whole time to doing that. What we're going to do today is a bit different. We're going to uh, look really at what God's done in the midst of us over the last year and then we're going to look a little bit at our financial situation how the money came in and where it went and then we're going to look a little bit at the journey ahead so if you're visiting I hope it just encourages you I hope that you leave here blessed and that you enjoy it and uh, if you're coming from another church or visiting today I just take our blessings with you to the place wherever it is that you normally worship it's great to have you with us um, I can't wait to get started on all the amazing I mean it is it's funny, isn't it? When you stop and you reflect on things, it is actually wild. It's actually wild what God's done. And if I get through the whole thing without crying three times, then it'll be a, a, just a total miracle. But uh, I just wanted to just start by talking about the why. Why is it that we do what we do? Why is it that we give our time, our talents, and our treasure? Why are we... Why are we trying to launch as many sites as we can? Why are we trying to plant churches now? What, why, why? What is the big why for all of what we're doing? And I wanted to read a little bit from Matthew chapter 9. So it's going to come up on the screen. It's even going to come up on this screen here. Uh, but um, Matthew chapter 9 verse 35 says this, Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Jesus looked out at the crowds, the crowds across all of the towns and villages that he was visiting in Judea and Samaria, and he saw that they were harassed and helpless and like sheep without a shepherd. And Jesus looks out on the northeast of Scotland and across the nation of Scotland, and he sees that people are harassed and helpless and like sheep without a shepherd. They're harassed. They're stressed, strained, frayed, worn out, hard-pressed, oppressed, worried, troubled, vexed, agitated, fretting, distraught. They're helpless, they're hopeless, powerless. They're unable to save themselves. They're unable to save themselves. And they don't know a shepherd. They don't know the shepherd. They don't know the Lord Jesus. And, and we believe, I think... I speak for all of us when I say we believe that that is incredibly important. That there are 4.9 million people, roughly speaking, in this nation who do not know the shepherd. They're harassed and helpless and they're like sheep without a shepherd. They don't know Jesus. And we believe in a real heaven and we believe in a real hell. And that's our why. That's why we do what we do. That's why we're giving our money. That's why we're giving our time. That's why we're doing everything we possibly can. Uh, on Easter Sunday this year, some statistics came out. They'd done a, a, a research project into the state of the church in Scotland. And what they discovered was devastating. What they discovered was that uh, whereas at the turn of the millennium, millennium there were 570,000 Christians in Scotland... Now there are 390,000 Christians in Scotland. So a third, almost exactly a third of the church has disappeared since 2002. It's horrendous. That means, that means that there are more people than ever before who are like sheep without a shepherd. There are more people than ever before who don't know the shepherd. And that is our why. And so... 
Just this week, I was at a retreat with uh, leaders from the larger churches, a bunch of the larger churches from around Scotland, and we were looking one another in the eye, and we were saying, this cannot be, this cannot stand, we must do something, we've got to put something on the line, we've got to risk something, we've got to, we've got to trust God in a fresh way, and we've got to pursue him, and we've got to obey him in whatever that means, and we're all looking each other in the eye and saying, we're going to hold each other to account for what comes next. And so really, we've been living as a church with a sense of call. It's going to come up on the screen now. This is it, to play our part in writing a new future for the church in Scotland. We've been living with that call for about two years, and it's never been clearer than it is today that we must play our part. All the other churches, the the leaders of the other churches are saying we're going to play their part. We've got to play our part. It's incredibly important. Um, And so everything I'm about to say over the next few minutes, I say few minutes, it's much more than a few minutes. Uh, I didn't sleep last night wondering about how many minutes it would be. But everything that you're about to hear is an explanation of what has been our response to this and what is going to be our response to this. What what are we going to do before God to play our part in writing a new future for the church in Scotland? And um, this has been easily the most amazing year we've ever had. And, and uh, I'm literally bursting with excitement to tell you about all the things that God has been doing. But, but if I could just say this, I, it just feels to me like all of heaven would want to say to us as a church, not only exhorting us to keep going and to keep putting everything on the line for him, but I do believe that he would say these two words. Well done. Well done. And so I've got some friends now that I'd love for you to meet. I've got more than five friends, but I'm going to introduce you to five friends. And so first of all, Dave Morrison, where are you? Why don't you come? Just be quick. Yeah, fantastic. Okay. Have a seat, Dave. Give, uh, give the Sip Mac a massive a, a, a wave down the camera. There you go. Nothing is already so much. <laughs> okay, so Dave, the first time you ever set foot in this building was for a funeral. Yeah. Um, just, just very briefly <laughs> describe what was life like for you then? Um, well, it wasn't really, it wasn't really a life. Again, looking back now, it was, it was uh, barely, it was barely in existence. Again, my, my life just uh, revolved around. For an early age, it revolved around drugs, uh, alcohol, prison. Um, I was that selfish, and I even thought about it this morning. I, I was that selfish, I didn't even care about myself, if that makes sense, because I was on self-destruct. So yeah. I was just like, I didn't even care about me, so I couldn't care about anybody else. Yeah. So it was, it was just a mess. It was just horrible. It was a mess. And that isn't your story now, is it? No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. So... I knew I was going to cry. There you go. That's cry number one. We need, uh, a, we need the tissues. <laughs> Tell us, wh- what, what, what has changed? How has it changed? What's, what's happened? Well, I mean, a load has changed. And so sometimes it, it doesn't feel like it, it's been that hard, if that makes sense. Can it really doesn't sometimes. The grace of God is, is just unbelievable. But for, for six years ago, this is five years for me coming up clean, nearly six and a bit years as a Christian, so, Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, come on. <laughs> yeah. But for that, for that day, I came into the, to the funeral, and my mate's coffin was just sitting there. And it, it, it's still a bit emotional, but in a good way now, again, because he's, mm. he, he's done something really amazing. Christ has done something amazing through him, and he didn't even speak to me, which is really funny. I find that hilarious again. But yeah. no, my, my life's just totally changed again. It's... I didn't have any purpose, no direction. Uh, the only desire in my heart was to get high and to hurt people and to hurt myself. Yeah. And that was, that was my desires. Yeah. So, so you've been clean for... Over five years. Over five years. And you've been working for how long? Um, three and a half years, which is a miracle in itself. It is amazing. It is amazing. And, and so w- uh, what... If, if we talk about playing our part in writing a new future for the church in Scotland, what's, what's your part? That's a good question, that, Chuck, because it's, it's a very daunting 
the thing is it to be told that we're part of this big movement, this big thing in, in Scotland. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think, I, I don't really hear big booming voices for God. And I, I don't feel, I don't hear, this is your calling, this is for you to do. And I, I just found out where he works, or far he, far he was and is working, and I just join in. Mm -hmm. And out of that, I found what my calling is. Yeah. You know, I, I, I just feel that the, the ministry has led me to, I've just got a, I've got a heart now to see, and it's such a privilege to be part of seeing souls saved. Can yeah. You touched on it earlier on, but yeah. to see people come to Christ, to see, to let people know that Christ is the answer to their, yeah. to their stuff, to, to other stuff. Amazing. And you, you're now one of eight people who's joined our Leadership Academy. Yeah. Uh, why, why have you done that? Because the Lord's asked me to. <laughs> <laughs> no, it... it Again, again, I haven't have really held nothing for the Lord in, in that sense. I've just heard them say, just get prepared. Just be prepared for if it's coming. Yeah. And I believe what he's doing in me and what he's doing in City Church is just the beginning. So Come on. the more people that's prepared for it at the time, the, the mayor has got to be even more amazing, has not it? Amazing. Dave, thank you so much. Thank you. Let's give Dave a cheer. Awesome. Jenny Kincaid, where are you? Yeah, come on. Have a seat. Don't worry, I'm not going to be Paxman. I'm going to be more Parkinson. Okay, so that's great. That's great. Don't worry about that. <laughs> I would say give Gilt Park a wave, but you, well, you could still Hi. give them a wave, but they're right, they're right Hi. here. Hi. <laughs> so, um, Jenny, um, really, you're here to talk about Student Alpha and what's happened with that, but that isn't the full story of what's been happening this year. You've had a bit of a tough year. Just Obviously, don't disclose anything that you wouldn't want to disclose. But what's what's been going on? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's been a it's been a hard year. I um so I've always suffered with sort of like mental health issues, and then the past about a year and a half ago, got diagnosed officially uh, with depression and anxiety. Mm -hmm. And um for anyone who knows what that feels like, it makes every day a slog, <laughs> like it's hard work. Um, and so just getting up in the morning is difficult. And so when you've got uni work and you know, people to see and student alpha and all that kind of stuff, it can just make that stuff seem like a way bigger mountain than it might already of course. be. Of course, and, and so what has church life, church family meant for you in that process? Yeah, um, so practically like um, prayer ministry was something that I went for, which was just incredible. I think I was like, oh, I don't really want to like share with anyone. This is not like me like to kind of like share with people but um it was really great to do that and like really receive healing from that but also just like relationships I had in church people really just being Jesus to me I think when you're not well sometimes it can feel like God's all airy fairy but actually to have people like offer you food or I don't know bring you coffee or give you a hug or something like that it's just yeah. so practical so yeah so good so good and and so talk, tell us about student alpha what's been happening uh, it's been a crazy year. We had over 70 people come to Student Alpha um, the last, <laughs> yeah, over the last year. So people who don't know Jesus coming in the door, it's just been incredible. But I think, um, I think for our, like for us as a team as well, it's it's not been primarily about seeing people come to salvation. Like that is what we want to see. But it's been more about just building an organic community among students for people to come and eat together and hang out together because we see so much isolation in that like student culture and so it's been yeah. amazing just to to see that build more and more and see people back on the path towards Jesus so so good yeah, so, good. so good and and again if we talk about playing our part in writing a new future what, what does playing your part look like I think um, just being obedient uh, is like a big thing for me. So I think just actually giving my all to God, like every morning saying, God, you know, I can't do today, but you can. That was a prayer that I prayed over and over again. Yeah. And giving my all to God, even when I don't have a lot to give, you know, rather than being like, well, I don't have much to give, so I'm not going to bother. But actually just being like, okay, God, you can do amazing things. You can multiply what I have. So yeah, just being obedient in that and uh, yeah, walking every day. So good. Thank you so much, Jenny. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Brian. Here comes Brian. Have a seat. It's not terribly comfortable, but... That'll do. It'll do. It's good. Do you want to say hi to the Ellen Massive? Hello, Ellen. <laughs> Sorry I can't be there, but now you know why. <laughs> so, Brian, um, it's quite an amazing story, your story. Like, none of your wife, your kids... None of you were Christians a short time ago. Uh, why weren't you a Christian, Brian? That's a good question. 
Um, I don't know, just never, I had never really thought about it before. Um, it just wasn't on my radar. I didn't know people who were Christians, it just it wasn't part of who I was at all. Um, I wasn't looking for him, um, but he found me. Mm. Um, my wife Tammy and my kids, um, they, they started coming to church seven years ago, um, and they came here, and I didn't. And then Tammy started going to small group with some lovely people, and she was coming home and telling me that everyone was praying for me. I thought, that's nice, but it didn't really mean a lot to me at the time. But mm. I just thought, it's nice that people care. Mm. And then I started going to church social events, um, barbecues, Kaylee, Christmas Eve service, and just started hanging with the guys, um, mainly in Newton Hill, but just church folk and finding out that they are normal folk, they're nice folk. Um, and then they started doing a, a weekly football thing and I love playing football, so I went along to that. And again, it was just fellowship and, and I felt like family. And that was something that was missing from my life at the time. Um, having moved from being in the Air Force through to Newton Hill, didn't know anyone. It's exactly what, as a family, we needed. Um, and so, fast forward to Kieran's baptism last Easter. And that's when I came to know God in a very real way. Um, so it took them seven years of praying, but it was worth everyone. So anyone out there that prayed for me, thank you. <laughs> and so you became a Christian, uh, and now um, you and Tammy are together leading pastoring the Ellen site. Uh, talk about that. <laughs> so yeah, after um, after I came to faith, I did the Alpha course, met some lovely people there, um, answered a lot of my questions, and. Off the back of that, we did a post-alpha small group, and uh, Tammy and I led that, and yeah, just felt a, um, God was just asking me to step into leadership, um, which is odd, considering I was kind of a baby Christian, but that's how it went, and then we went along to the leadership conference, and if anyone gets a chance to go this year, please do, it's amazing to spend a few days just in the presence of God with no work, no family to worry about, just you and God together. And during that time, very clearly God told myself and Tammy separately that we were going to be leading a church at some point in the future. Didn't know where, didn't know when, um, but we, we freaked out a bit. <laughs> and then we prayed into it. And, and now here you are. And here we are, site pastors in Ellen. It's so awesome. Good. It's incredible. I, I, this is really important. There, there, there have to be people who are not yet Christians, who are in the same situation as Brian, who will plant churches and lead sites. That has to be the way. The more, we, we, we can't be restricted by the people who are currently Christians. So in so many ways, you're like a dream to me. Uh, it's so exciting. Uh, it's slightly uh, odd. Yeah, they... <laughs> Well, as soon as I said it, I thought, that is actually quite odd, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, so what does playing your part look like, Brian? P playing your part in writing a new future? I think exactly what Jenny said, just obedience. Just when God asks you to do something, you do it. Yeah. Because he's got the grand plan. He's got my back. That's that a current phrase. Anytime anything seems hard, God's got my back. So All good. the way from the beginning, God's got my back. So... We're just doing everything we can to bring as many people in Ellen, the surrounding area, to know Jesus, because so many people don't, and that's just, that's sad. Amazing, amazing. Brian, thank you so much. Thank you. And finally, Les and Marion, why don't you come? Let's give Les and Marion a cheer. Have a seat. I don't know which one of you wants to hold that. Oh, he can hold it. <laughs> uh, do you want to give Stonehaven a little wave? Hello, Stonehaven. Hi, <laughs> um, so this is quite strange for you, isn't it? Like a couple of years ago, it would have been very hard to imagine you sat where you're sat now. Uh, talk about um, what, your life before you became, became Christians. What, what was your perception of Christians? 
for me, I always thought I was a good person. I thought no, I just did. move the microphone a bit close to your mouth. I thought, I thought I always thought I was a good person. Um, I did the right things, but um, when we became Christians, I realized that what I did in my previous life was that I lived my life under my rules. So I was always going to be a good person because I changed the rules to make me a good person. <laughs> <laughs> and then I became a Christian. Um, and what happened then was that I lived my life under a separate set of rules. And I realized that maybe previously I had been a bit selfish, maybe a bit judgmental, um, maybe a bit obnoxious when I denied Jesus. Um, but that was how it was, so it was okay. Now I realize yeah. it wasn't okay. Yeah. And my life has changed. It's just completely transformed my life. Um, so how did, God I, my life. Yeah, it's amazing. So how did, how did you get from um, just making your own rules and, and not really having a regard for God and now saying God has completely changed your life? Like what's the, what, what are the steps that were involved in that? The, the, the steps were that um, we um, came to church and probably came to church through um, uh, perseverance in prayer. And it wasn't our perseverance in prayer. <laughs> it was perseverance in prayer for our family who had prayed for us and uh, James and Tory uh, prayed for us. Um, and we didn't realize that until we became Christians. Um, and we went to church. We went to church for a specific reason as well because there was something we needed to pray for. Mm -hmm. And um, we went along, we got an answer to prayer. Uh, for me, I went to church as well because Marion wanted to go to church. And I thought, oh, I better just go along and see what it's going to be like. But it was, um, it was uh, hook, line and sinker for me because uh, I had an answer to prayer. And I think God spoke to me and said, well, you need to do something about this. Was, um, and that's what happened. And then it moved on from there. We did the Alpha course. Um, we um, a part a small group. We, yeah. are, um, we went to the... Um, conference in yeah. Glasgow. We yeah. went down to um, HTB conference. Um, so a lot's happened in the last couple of years. Um, and it's um, the, the, the one thing is that we're, we're not the youngest ones to be sitting up here today. <laughs> is, um, but in the last two years, our life has been completely transformed. And we are, but for me, I'm a better person. And I think I better let Marion say something now. <laughs> yeah, come on, Marion. So, Marion, just talk about what, what differences has uh, following Jesus made in your life? I think it probably makes me feel differently about everything mm. that's happening in life nowadays. Mm. Um, we've been going through difficult spells in life, and I found that easier to deal with because I pray about it sometimes yeah. rather than try and take it all on myself. Yeah. We're used to just think, oh, how can I fix this? Yeah. Ask Leslie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I don't do that now. I just, I pray about it more. And I feel more relaxed about things. Yeah. Although sometimes my daughters would say I don't. But, <laughs> but I do really. <laughs> I feel a lot more relaxed. And I just feel a peace about things that I never felt before. So good. So good. And so I don't know which, uh, which of you wants to answer this question. But again, when we're looking at playing our part, what, is, what would you say your part is in, in writing a new future? Well, as Les said before, we're part of running an alpha group just now, and I think we've both got a passion for that, so we'll continue to do that because yeah. we think it's a great tool to bring people to meet Jesus, yeah. um, even non-Christians to reaffirm their faith, um, sorry, Christians to reaffirm their faith. Yeah. We think it's good for that as well and thoroughly enjoy doing that. It brings a bit of excitement back into your own life, Brilliant. seeing other people come into Jesus and we'll continue to serve in church, continue to be part of a small group, and just do anything else that God asks us to do. Les and Marion, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Amazing. And those five people are really just a snapshot of what God has been doing in the life of our church. Um, at the risk of offending people for not mentioning the thing that you're most passionate about in the whole world and your personal highlight for the last 
uh, year. Let me just highlight a whole bunch of things that the Lord has been doing in our midst. So, for example, last year, the MAD team, our kids' ministry team, they ran three holiday clubs in uh, different locations around and about. This past year, they ran 10 holiday clubs all over the uh, city and into the Shire, and 660 children came to those holiday clubs. In fact, our kids' ministry is just exploding everywhere you look. Some Sundays, there are more than 190 children who are worshipping Jesus. Jesus across the life of our church uh, and that's grown more this year than at any other year previously in the life of our church. There are actually um, at the moment as far as people can tell 303 people who volunteer to serve our kids week by week and, and so just on behalf of the parents and the children if you ever put on a red t-shirt here or in one of the other sites and serve our children it's, it, may, it means the world to us you're making an enormous eternal difference to these kids lives we just want to say thank you so much we should give them a cheer amazing uh, our youth ministry, which is called Encounter, uh, has gone through quite a big transition this year and they've started meeting more locally. And so whereas before they were meeting here every Tuesday night, now they only do that once a month and for the rest of the time they're meeting in each of the sites locally. Uh, and, and as a result of that and a bunch of other things, double the number of young people are meeting week by week than they were a year ago, which is amazing. Our CAP Debt Advice Centre has now... Um, served 33 clients and two of those are now debt free. Uh, it's just an astonishing achievement and we're believing God for the rest of them. One, one of the uh, clients said this, my children asked me what, what had happened because I was smiling. I slept really well last night, she said. So, so good. We launched Cafe Church uh, here and also at St. Macca, and those are gateway worship services for people who are not used to church, they're not used to being in church, uh, and, and uh, it's just there's a whole bunch of people who are now really at the heart of our church as a result of those ministries. Our worship team, all 125 of them, have been serving haven't they been serving us so well? Just week by week, they're often the, the first people here or in the sites, the, the last people to leave, uh, uh, just leading us into such sweet moments with God. We have had such sweet moments of worship over the last year, and we're so grateful to them. And we've recently employed Andrew Reed as our first ever worship pastor uh, part-time, and he's doing an absolutely spectacular job. Um, in a bunch of different sites, they've been doing this thing called the Miracle Question, which is where they go out onto the streets locally and just ask people, uh, if, if Jesus could do a miracle in your life, what would it be? And they've been offering to pray for people. Um, Archie was telling me, Archie is the site pastor from Inverurie, he was telling me that uh, over the course of the last year, they've led seven people to Jesus on the streets of Inverurie, just by stopping people and asking them that question. And I'm sure there are many others in the other sites as well. A whole bunch of families have opened up their homes and their families to foster or adopt children. And that has been such a joy. You, if you're doing that, either here on the sites, you are heroes to us, uh, just giants of the faith. And uh, we, we know of at least eight children who have homes uh, in families from our church, which is really, you, you are literally changing those kids' lives. It's absolutely astonishing, and we're believing God for many, many more as well. Um, in each site, we, we put those bins at the front, and we collect food for storehouse, and as fast as you can give it, we're just giving it away again. Uh, over the course of the last year, we gave away more than 25,000 items of food. That's more than 10 tons to 300, and hang on, I've got it written down here, 374 different individuals who really needed that food. Yeah, it's just a very practical thing that we're, we were able to do. In this building, there's a men's and women's drop-in that happens uh, during the week. Uh, just an opportunity to build a relationship with people from our community and really try and find out how we can help people. During the course of the year, um, 138 people have been helped by that ministry. And again, thank you if you're involved in that. Uh, we all know, or we don't all know, many of us know, Caroline Crombie, who's our extraordinary, <laughs> extraordinary uh, champion for social transformation and social justice. Uh, she has been going into the prisons and uh, meeting people in the prison, 
helping them to make a plan for their release, meeting them at the gate, uh, helping them to build a life that doesn't involve drugs or crime, uh, and helping people to break free from the cycle of crime and punishment that they've been engaged in, many of them for their whole lives. And this year we were able to take on an additional community chaplain to also work into those uh, environments and to help many, many more people. Dave Pratt is doing a fantastic job uh, now that he's started. In February, we set aside a whole day to support marriage. And some of you are thinking, oh yeah, we did that this year. We did do that this year. And Nikki and Silla Lee came up. 94 couples from around the church came along to invest in their marriage for that day. And then off the back of that, there were 17 marriage courses happening locally in, in homes around this whole region. And 64 couples signed up for those and so uh, a whole bunch of marriages are in a totally different place as a result of what the Lord's been doing there. Mainly music is a phenomenon. <laughs> Mainly music happens in five of our sites now, that's Ellen, Stonehaven, St. Macca, Lawrence, uh, Lawrence Kirk and Gilt Park. And this year we've been in regular contact with 179 families from around this area. So those are families who would have probably had no connection with our church if it wasn't for that, but we're in regular contact, many of them coming to a whole bunch of stuff that's happened in the life of our church, and many of them have committed their lives to Jesus. It's just amazing. It's absolutely amazing. And when you add that to Who Let the Dads Out, which is a, a, min, a similar kind of a ministry for dads on Saturday mornings in Ellen, there's another 20 families there. So between those two, we're reaching just about 200 families in this region who we wouldn't have been connecting with any other way. We've run six money courses, cap money courses, helping people to figure out what do I do with my money, how do I steward my money better, get a grip on my finances, which has been incredibly helpful. We talked about the Alpha course earlier, earlier on. 160 people have been through the Alpha course in our church over the last year. Last month, we launched the Leadership Academy, Sarah Robertson is the director of training for us. She's established that. She's designed the most amazing syllabus. And uh, eight people have joined that from five different sites, all of them with enormous potential, giving over a whole bunch of their time this year to um, develop th their own character, their leadership ability, their skills, their experience. And we know that there's a, a very real possibility that a bunch of those people will go and plant churches or lead sites or lead business or, or whatever in the time to come. A very, very exciting thing that's been happening. We planted a church. <laughs> we planted a church. Uh, Inverness Vineyard Church exists, uh, albeit in embryonic form. So Thomas and Mary, uh, it's been hard to lay hands on them, commission them to move to Inverness. There's about 20 adults and a handful of kids who are either moved to Inverness already or um, are in the process of moving to Inverness. They're starting to gather on Sunday mornings to walk the land and to pray and to get to know one another. And we are so terrifically excited for them. We're also believing that that church is going to be the first of many, many churches that are launched all over this nation over the coming years. And you will have heard me talk about 21 by 21, which is really um, a kind of a background project. It's going to be something that is happening all the time over the next five years or more, just helping people who have a sense of call to church planting to have a route towards it and all the training and stuff that, that will be in place for them. And so uh, we're believing God that, that something really, really exciting is going to be happening over the next uh, five years. Um, one down, tick, 20 to go. Come on. Do you see what I mean? It's, it is amazing what God has been doing. Our church is growing faster now than it's ever grown. We've got more people coming to faith now than we've ever had. Um, each week we wave those green cards, don't we? And we say, if you want to make this your spiritual home, fill in this form that says, count me in. You're saying, I want to belong to this family. We've had 157 green cards filled in over the course of the last year. That's 204 adults and 120 children represented on those cards. So 324 people have joined our church over the last year, which is more than any other year previously. So just to give you an indication of what that looks like, Last Sunday, uh, we had 911 people who were worshipping Jesus at one of our sites, which was uh, just an amazing, amazing thing. And in fact, on Easter Sunday, when we had baptisms, I think we baptised 33 people um, 
Easter Sunday, every site service was packed out, and so we had 1,108 people worshipping Jesus on Easter Sunday in City Church, which is just astonishing. Uh, and so taking into account people moving away for work or because they finished their studies or whatever, and other people coming in, we now believe that there's just approaching 1,300 people who would call City Church their spiritual home, which is completely nuts and wild and really, really exciting. But more important than all of those numbers is the number of people who've surrendered their life to Jesus for the first time. And it is actually, if I can get this out without breaking down, then it'll be a miracle. But it is astonishing. It's astonishing what the Lord has done. And so the number of men, women and children who've come to know Jesus in the life and ministry of our church over the last year, as far as we know, there may be more, is 352 <laughs> Three hundred and fifty-two, and many of those people are sat here or in in the other sites. And we we welcome you into the family. We're so thrilled for you. And uh, that is just the beginning. It's just, I mean, three hundred fifty-two sounds like a lot until you say four point nine million people, sheep without a shepherd. So there's a lot to be done. But we've got so much to celebrate. Do you see what we're trying to do? Is play our part. That's all we can do but we can celebrate what God's done. So why don't we stand? We're going to worship God together. You're going to worship in your sights, and then we're going to see you in a few minutes. And welcome back to our sights. Let's give them another cheer and a wave. There you go. Uh, sorry, it turns out you're slightly less welcome than you were earlier. Let's try it again. Whee! There you go. There you go. Very good. Very good. Okay, so we used to have pie chart day. Um, on a Saturday night when we invited people from the church to come and hear about, you know, the numbers, the, the, uh, the, the accounts. And nobody came. And those people who did came wishes, wished that they didn't. And so what we started to do a long time now, actually, ago, was to talk about the numbers on a Sunday morning, to just be transparent and just, just let you know how it is uh, on a Sunday morning in the context of all of the other stuff you know, being able to celebrate everything that God has done with that money. So it's incredibly important that you hear this, that you understand that every penny that has been given to the life of our church um, is, is all been deployed to answer that one sentence, to play our part. It's all about that. That's what, that's what the whole financial piece is about. It's just about serving this, the communities that we're part of, communicating the gospel to as many people as possible, loving and serving people into the kingdom. And, and um, that's it. That's what the money's about. So um, if you gave to City Church in the last 12 months, I, I just, it's, I, I'd love it if you would go home today just thankful that you gave. You know, if, if, you, if, you went over, if, you, if you went without something to give money to the life and ministry of our church, then you can go home knowing that you did a good thing, knowing that your money made not just a little bit of difference, but made the world of difference to hundreds and hundreds of people's lives. That's, that's really the, the whole purpose of this whole morning in so many ways. And um, uh, let me just say as well, I'm not on commission, uh, so... Uh, you know, however this goes down, it, it doesn't affect my salary in any way. And also to say that all of the, the finances and all of that are actually anonymous to, to those of us who are in leadership. So nobody who's in this church, in leadership in this church, knows who gives or how much you give. That's really important that you know that. Okay, so um, about almost exactly five years ago, we had a gift day. Uh, it was called Spreading Life Together. And... Um, it was an offering, really. Uh, we put a big basket at the front of the church, and, and we were asking everyone who was part of the church to consider what they could give over and above their regular giving to serve the spreading out of our church. And um, it was just such a sweet day, and so many people. We had no secret millionaires in the church, but just loads and loads of people gave what they felt God was asking them to give. And I can remember standing here in almost exactly, exactly this spot, almost exactly five years ago, and saying, how do we know that this will work? We don't. And how do we know whether in five years' time, when we've spent all the money, we'll have anything to show for it? We don't. 
but we've just got to do it. We've got to be obedient. And so people gave, if we could just have the slide with the SLT on it. So in October 2012, we, uh, people pledged 441 and a half thousand pounds. And from that, eventually people gave 469 and a half thousand pounds. So we were worried that not everyone would see through their pledges and that actually we'd get less. But in fact, we got slightly more than what people promised, which is amazing. And we have spent 469 and a half thousand pounds of that money. In other words, we've, it's all gone. There's nothing left. It's all, every penny is spent and more. There is remaining zero. It's all gone. But whereas we may have been worried about whether we would have anything to show for it, oh my goodness, what have we got to show for it? The church has grown exponentially. Hundreds and hundreds of people have come to faith. And so if you've joined our church in the last five years, you maybe weren't aware, particularly if you're in one of our sites, you know, the, the screen that you're watching this thing on and the speakers that you're hearing it through and the pastor who introduced your uh, service today um, has all been paid for uh, by the generosity and sacrifice of hundreds and hundreds of people who were part of our church five years ago. And so we just want to say, if you gave to that offering, uh, either on the day or after it, uh, on behalf of all the people whose lives have been affected by that, we just want to give you a massive cheer and say thank you so much. It's so good. So good. So good. Okay, let's talk about the regular income of the church then. So over the course of the last year, uh, the, all the offerings on a Sunday in the baskets and people putting money into the bank and so on, you gave £670,000, which is an extraordinary amount of money. Um, and in fact, it's 4% up on last year. So given the, the economy of the oil industry and all of that stuff, uh, it is, is actually a miracle that God has provided in that way. Um, I will say, however, that if you take out two or three large gifts that we received during the course of the year, our income actually would have gone down. So the Lord has provided, but there are also... Uh, we, we definitely have got some challenges financially over the course of the next year. 54 people or 54 households began giving by standing order over the, over the course of the last year, which is brilliant. Thank you so much. When you go on holiday, your money still comes to church. That joke never gets old. Um, and, uh, but more importantly, we can budget really clearly when we know exactly how much is coming in every month. And so for those 54 of you added to the many hundreds more, thank you for doing that. That makes a big difference. As well as that, 33 households increased their giving, uh, which again is fantastic. So uh, you gave, and then the Chancellor of the Exchequer kept writing us checks, uh, and we claimed back all the gift aid, for, you know, all the tax that you'd paid on that giving that you gave, and so the, we got 141,000 pounds of gift aid money, which is fantastic, and just goes to show you that it's well worth filling in the form. You know, if you're a taxpayer and you normally give by putting cash into the basket, please don't do that. Please will you either give by standing order and fill out a gift aid form or put it into the yellow envelopes and write your name on the front and then we can claim all of the tax back on that giving. As well as that, there was £243 of other income. I never know what that is. Somebody sold a kidney or a car or... I think it's to do with the pastor's lunch that we host. I don't know. I don't really know. But it's 243 quid. So the total income of the church was 812,000 pounds, which is a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Here's how we spent it. We gave away 15% of it. We gave away 120, nearly 122,000 pounds which is wild, and, and that has gone all over the world. So we've given to 17 different mission partners in 11 different countries. Let me just talk about some of those countries. Um, Kenya, Albania, China, Scotland, Sri Lanka, India, Tanzania, Uganda, South Africa, and Cambodia. I think that's... 10. Anyway, anyway, there's another country there somewhere. One of the projects, we gave lots of money to lots of different projects. One of the, the things that we gave to was to our friends at Kids Club Kampala. So Corrie used to be part of this church. She started a ministry in Uganda serving the thousands of um, po impoverished children in Kampala in Uganda. They do such an amazing thing. And one of the things that we gave money to was we, we gave £3,000 to them to pay for health insurance for their staff. 
So she, they wrote to us, they said, our staff situation is really dodgy most of the time because many of our staff are ill, they don't have health cover, so it's really, really a difficult situation. Would you consider giving that? And we were like, of course, why would we not do that? And so we gave them £3,000. Literally a few weeks later, I got this email from Corrie. She said, last week, our Iwafe project coordinator and one of my longest standing friends, Beatrice, was rushed to hospital. She was seven months pregnant and was sadly losing the baby. However, it was also clear that she was very, very much at risk of losing her own life too. She needed a blood transfusion and the blood bank had no blood of her type left, a common occurrence in Ugandan hospitals. So we had to get her transferred to another hospital in, um, in the middle of the night. There was a point where she was really slipping away and needed blood urgently. Thankfully, the new hospital managed to get some in time and slowly but surely she pulled through. I've just come off the phone with Sam who said she's now going to be discharged today to go home. None of this kind of care would have been possible without her having health insurance. And so I just want to thank you all for being a part of saving her life. <laughs> unbelievable, unbelievable. And, so, and then just last week, um, just completely unprompted, we didn't ask for it, but they sent us a little video to say thank you. And so I'd love it if we could watch that video now. You'll see Beatrice actually in the video. Even if we sleep under mosquito net, uh, you tend to get uh, a, a, a mosquito bite. Typhoid. Typhoid. I've been affected by typhoid many times. I've fallen sick recently. Falling sick it is too expensive to go and be treated. You can even stay at home and go without treatment. I am very grateful um, as a leader for the opportunity given to us by City Church to have insurance. Insurance has been so helpful to us as an organization. It has really done me good. I'm very happy about the health insurance given to us. I'm so happy for the insurance. We are so happy that we have benefited from the insurance. Um, I must say the health uh, insurance scheme has been really vital to us as staff. The staff have had a peace of mind. We have had no worry at all about um, having money for going to the hospitals. Um, most of the staff have fallen sick um, over this period, but they have already just been walking into the hospitals and they have been worked on. Whenever I'm not feeling good, I really have easy access to medical services, which wasn't the case before, whereby maybe if you felt sick, you really needed maybe to look for money. Sometimes you don't have, sometimes you have. So it was a struggle before the medical insurance cards. But then the moment I got one, anytime I have access to the hospital to get the quick service I really need. Of course, this time round, I have where to run to. Like uh, before it wasn't the case, like you could just get sick, you pay, you keep on leaving the sickness to grow every time. But these days so when you kind of show your card, the insurance card, it becomes so, so easy for them to work on you as fast as they can. During the time I was sick, the time I was going through hard time, this card helped me in that I was assisted in time because me I was down but the people around were working around the corner to see that I'm better and those people were so caring. I got some challenge with my health. Uh, good enough the money that was asked from me it was ready catered for and I didn't have to you know panic and I'm now very better, yeah. I've been sick, but I got the treatment, the medication, and it was all good. 
um, I've quite benefited a, a lot from it, especially when I get some um, malaria. Like earlier this year, I had some bit of toothache and I had to remove it. Uh, I had a second one that was supposed to be refilled. So really, it is basically an amazing and a blessing uh, to have gotten that scheme because it's quite expensive health-wise in Uganda to know, uh, you know, look after your health. And I would love to thank uh, the team that actually, actually sponsored us in that area. We just pray that as a team, we have such a continuous opportunity. And we also thank the people who supported us in this because uh, we are no longer experiencing the difficulties that we had before. We still pray that this uh, opportunity will always be available because this has helped us so much. I, I must say thank you very much, City Church, and may God bless you. Thank you so much. Brilliant, hey? So good. And that was £3,000. And we gave away £121,000. Do you see? It's astonishing what God is doing with the money that you give. And uh, rest assured, we sent another £3,000 this week so that they can get health insurance for another year. So it's all good. It's so brilliant. So we gave £121,000 to missions. It cost £71,000 to run this building and also to hire venues in all the other sites for all the other activities that we do. Um, there were £137,000 of operational costs, so that's um, mainly staff costs, to be honest, things like uh, operations, uh, the finance team, the admin team, uh, and uh, also things like paying for um, uh, when we have our accounts audited and the photocopying and all that kind of stuff costs that much. Uh, £304,000 on ministry costs, that's the sta mainly staff ministry costs of employing the number of pastors that we do across all of the sites. Uh, we gave £121,000, deployed it into kids and youth and student ministry. Keep going. Uh, church, family, life and worship is a kind of a catch-all phrase for the Alpha course, the marriage course, preparing people for marriage uh, and loads of other different things. Worship, live streaming costs, things like that. Um, there was an extra additional cost of £30,000 to finalise the launching of those two other sites. So you'll remember that we said we were going to do two sites for the price of one, and we didn't quite manage that. So there's another £30,000 uh, that that cost. And then we also, we've been putting aside for the last two years now, uh, £20,000 a year uh, ready so that when we launch our next site, we'll have some money in the bank to do that. And so in total, we spent £844,000. And so when you look at that uh, in a one -er, we hold £40,000 in reserves, uh, so that's just good practice for a charity to make sure that if um, a bomb went off, we would have some money to be able to resolve the bomb, uh, whatever that bomb might be. Uh, but we began the year with £70,000, we added 800 we spent a bit more than 800 and so we now have £39,000 in the bank, which is fantastic. But what you need to hear is that God has provided every penny for what we needed. That's really important. What you also need to notice is that we started the year with more than we have now. And you can't carry on like that for very long before you've got minus numbers. And so we're at, we have a financial challenge. Let's have the next slide. Okay. So let me just give my interpretation of the finances for our church. The, the line that you need to hear is this. We have growth issues. Everything that's growing... <laughs> cost money, everything. You know, let's just say that you wanted to start a ministry and you needed to hire a venue for it. And so you, you found a venue that would hire you a venue for 30 quid a week, okay? 30 quid a week, that's 1,500 pounds a year. And then when you do it in seven sites, that's 10,000 pounds. And that's the kind of, you know, so you think it's only cost 30 quid a, a week. Oh no, but it's costing 10,000 pounds a year. And that's the kind of sum that gets done over and over and over again. Our site pastors are leading us so brilliantly to put down roots into local communities, to serve people, to get the gospel out. They're having new ideas before breakfast every day and we're doing many of them and, and it's so fruitful, but it just costs a lot of money. And so as, it, as the church is growing and the scope of what we're doing is growing, that's causing us some financial challenges. Um, I've been praying about what to say and 
I just feel like I just need to be honest. I'm a very laid back person. I'm very chilled out. Uh, I, I, you know, generally speaking, most nights I sleep well. But I've, if I've had any sleepless nights over the course of the last year, it's about our money situation. Um, we, we, we need, let, let me say it like this, in our church, we're no longer the church where 20% of the people do 80% of the work, right? So, you know, 300 people are serving our kids' ministry. 125 people are serving our worship ministry. We're no longer the church where everyone else spectates and 20% of people look exhausted, except in our finances. In our finances, 20% of the people in our church are doing the heavy lifting. And it's not that we've got millionaires or secret millionaires or, or you know, it's not... Our accountant would say, Adrienne, she would say, it's not the wealthiest people who give the most. It's people who've made a deliberate decision to be intentional about their giving and their generosity, that they're, go, they're choosing to go without things in order to facilitate the ministry and mission of our church. And so um, uh, my encouragement to you, the, the encouragement of Taryn and I and the leadership team is this. It's we will only be able to do all of the things that God is calling us to do if we do it united and together. If all of us, if all of us give generously and sacrificially to make it happen. And so if City Church is your spiritual home, if you're visiting, it's great to have you with us, be our guest. If this is your spiritual home, please will you consider how much you give uh, to, the, to the life and ministry of our church. The only thing that will hold us back is the money. Um, and so uh, you, you would have seen this, this uh, new, uh, what do you call it? web address uh, that we're using at the moment. This is now the easiest way that you can give to our church. It, it, if you go to this address on your phone even, you can give. You can, it'll help you to give as a one-off or it'll help you to set up a regular uh, giving. It, you can do it with PayPal, you can do it with a, with a card, you can do it with all kinds of different ways. It'll help you to fill in your gift aid, all of that stuff on that one page. And I'd just love to encourage you to join in if, uh, if you're not currently giving in the way that you could be. Um, uh, I, I was going to say, what we've learned is it generally speaking takes people about two years from se se stepping through the door of our church and joining to then starting to give. And if you've, if you've come from another church in another area or whatever, please don't, please don't make it last two years. Please don't drag that out to two years. If you're in the habit of giving, please just continue to give. That would be incredibly helpful for us. Okay. So uh, let me just finish with this. Every year we set a priority for the year ahead. And last year, you might remember, the priority was we're going to stand together. We said we, God has been speaking to us prophetically uh, that the enemy will oppose us in three different areas. He'll oppose us to do with our health, particularly our mental health. He'll oppose us with our marriages and relationships. And he'll oppose us with our children. And we, my goodness, it's been an onslaught. Even on our staff team, we've seen significant health issues and mental health issues in our staff. It's been horrendous. But we have stood together and we have opposed God, opposed God, <laughs> opposed the enemy. And, and, and we've prayed like we've never prayed before as a church in all kinds of different environments. And we've made it through. And so the priority for this year, we feel, is just one word, really. It's the word invitation. Every single one of the 300 and 52 people who became Christians in the life of our church came to know Jesus because somebody made an invitation to them. And so it's, it's not rocket science, is it? If we do more invitations, then we'll see more people come to know Jesus. And there are many, many things that you could invite people to. You could invite people to a Sunday service. You could invite people to the squash club in Ellen. You could invite people to a Cayley in Inverurie. You could invite people to a football thing on a Sunday afternoon in Stonehaven. You could invite people to mainly music. You could invite people to uh, the leadership conference. I don't know. You could invite people to anything. And so our encouragement to you as the leaders of the church is just make an invitation. M pray about who's in your life, who you could invite, and what you could invite them to. Think of someone that you can invite to something. And don't just think about it, but please just then do it. We would so love that. We would so love that. Let me just finish with this. At this retreat last week, or this past week with the other uh, 
a whole bunch of other leaders from around Scotland. There are a number of churches, it's really interesting, uh, a couple of years ago there were no other multi-site churches except for us in the room and now most of the other churches are um, starting new sites and, and, or, and new expressions of their church in different areas and so they, in, in this meeting this week they were saying, so we feel very stretched they were saying, it's like, we don't really quite have enough money, we don't quite have enough people, we don't have quite enough resources, it's very uncomfortable. And they looked at me and they said, when does that season sort of finish? And I was like, hmm, never, <laughs> uh, never. Um, and it doesn't, does it? It doesn't. And then I had this epiphany, which is that, Living out on a limb. You know, we've been preaching for years saying, expect great things from God. Attempt great things for God. We've been saying, live by faith and not by sight. We've been saying, um, live the kind of life for which only God is the explanation. And I just suddenly had this epiphany that that's what we've been doing. That is what we've been doing. It's the life of faith. It's the, it's the way a Christ, the Christian life is supposed to be. It's the way church life is supposed to be. We don't have quite enough resources. We don't have quite enough money. We don't have quite enough people. But we're stretching. We're out on a limb. We're walking in faith. We're trusting in God. And, and we're, we're living the kind of life as a church for which only God is the explanation. And the amazing thing is, as we look back over the course of the last year, only God is the explanation for everything that's happened. Why don't we stand?